Oh, hi. So, hi. I am really, really sorry about this. I am really, really behind on 110 play project, but, um, I'm hoping that in the next week that I'm going to catch up. Um, so, let's get started on Tartuve. Um, it's written by Molière. Um, he was born in 1622, died in 1673 in France. Um, besides being a playwright, he was an actor and stage manager, and um, he's made famous for his death on stage, performing the hypochondriac, which he wrote, um, his death from TV. Um, he wrote Tartu France 1664, and some of his contemporaries include uh, the French classical theater. Well, his contemporary was Racine, but, um, Cornel, um, was also, um, a writer of the French classical period who preceded him by about 30, 40 years. Um, so, um, some of the major productions in this play, um, well, the original production was in May 1664 as part of these festivities. I can't pronounce the name of the festivities, but it was in the Palace of Versailles in France, and it led to the text being banned. Um, and of this, it was three acts. It was acts one, three, and four of this text. And, uh, L'Impostor which was five acts, was performed once in 1667, which was a revision of the play, um, and that was banned, and this was at, um, Theatre du Palais Royal, Royal, sorry, I, I'm not good with French pronunciation, um, the final revision, Le Tartuffe, was in 1669, and that was the same place, and was is pretty much the version we have today, although, as I said, original version, 1664. Um, in 1938, um, Con Stanislavski worked on a production of Tartuffe just before his death. Um, some of the more modern productions included <clears throat> the Broadway version in 1660, not 16, sorry, 1965, and in 1977, in 1996, there's a Kennedy Center adaptation in 82, another Broadway one in 2002 to 2003, um, one in England, not, not sorry, not, not England, well, I'm in, um, Edinburgh in 87, and then 2006. Um, the National Theater in 1990, um, and, yeah, so, um, so, I found this play to be extremely hilarious, um, probably more than any of the comedies that I've read, um, or probably will read for a while, very, very, Funny, very witty, with really great social commentary, excellent, excellent play. Highly recommend it. Um, so, there's this guy, Orgon, and his family um, is kind of against the idea that him and his mother have fallen under the influence of Tartuffe, who's this big fraud. But um, Tartuffe basically pretends to speak with like, divine authority, and, um, Orgon and his mother are just like, wow, he's the greatest guy ever. Um, Orgon, Orgon basically has, um, I, I'm sorry, I, th I think it's Orgon, it could be Orgo. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's an anglicized French name or what. So, I just read the text. I haven't really heard heard it being pronounced or seen a production of it, so I don't. Or nor do I 
know the rules of French, so I apologize in advance, but um, this guy has an obsession with Tartuffe, pretty much. Um, bordering line homoerotic tendencies. Um, however, Tartuffe doesn't fool anyone else other than the mom in Orban. Um, and they all hate him. So, Orban uh, wants Tartuffe to marry his daughter, Marion, who's already new to Valier. Um, and Marion, of course, is kind of upset about this. Um, and the family is kind of pissed. Um, so, in order to show how the head of the guy Tartuffe is, um, these guys set up a trap to con for him to confess Elmire, who's Argon's wife, um, that he loves her, and he wastes no time doing that, and, um, so you know that he's gonna, so it's confirmed that he does make a move on her, um, and, anyway, um, Argon is eventually brought in to see all this, um, it for, oh, before I get into that, um, um, Dennis, um, one of the characters, he, um, I forgot, uh, there's something, that there's a conflict with Dennis, um, oh, Oh, sorry, Demis tells him, he tells Orgon, um, about Tartuffe, and Tartuffe banishes him from the house, and, sorry, he, Orgon banishes Tartuffe from the house. Um, so, and Tartuffe basically says he should be taught a lesson, um, so, he's like, I should be around Elmire more than ever. And, Ron basically, our, this was really funny, um, to praise Tartuffe, he gives all his worldly possessions to him. And, so, they're like, okay, we really have to do something. So, Orgon, who, who's, um, easily convinced, decides to hide under a table when they tell him, um, about, um, Tartuffe and Elmire. He just wants to prove his wife wrong. So, when he sees Tartuffe make a move on him, on her, he becomes extremely angry and orders Tartuffe out. Well, Tartuffe has possessions of um, these incriminating letters, and he's taken the box, and, um, so, he goes on, and he gets a policeman, and he basically, um, convicts, he, he, he says somebody else has had an affair with the wife, and, um, anyway, the king, Louis, um, the 14th, has heard about Tartuffe, and he decides that Tartuffe should be arrested, and this, this is the point where Oran's mother finally, um, seems to not be fooled anymore. She, up to this point, after she found out about Orgon's, Orgon's wife and him, he, she didn't believe it. Um, so, um, 
very, very funny place, he said. Um, we have <clears throat> Tartuffe, who's basically the trickster of the display, and Orgon, who's basically the patriarch. Um, and you have the other family roles and servant roles, and then you have the old woman. Um, this trickery, um, the theme, um, goes into the subject of hip hypocrisy of religion, which is basically what this plays about, um, Tartuffe acting like a divine man, and really, in the end, he is corrupt, and he has fooled the people, tricked them into thinking that he is a man of God, but in the end, he is, he's basically a villain, and it takes people some time to, um, see that he's a religious hypocrite, how he says he's religious, but he does sinful things, and, um, Tartary Priestley is definitely, um, a symbol for the church. He's a personification for the church. Um, one of the reasons why this play was Banned. Um, comparing the, the people um, to Oran and um, Madame Parnell, um, and skeptics, atheists who um, are right. Um, and I guess more than corruption, it is basically about. Um, just how not, not so much corruption church, but how religion, um, has its downsides and how, um, certain religions do sinful, sinister things and are dirty and corrupt. Um, so, um, making the other characters look justifiable. And, of course, the patriarch in this play is the one who is under the spell. Um, and, and, and as well as the old character, eldest character. Um, they are the ones who are under the spell of Tartu slash the church. Um, they're tricked by him. While the bluster people like the servants and the women and young men are not tricked by this. Um, also, um, as I said, there's homoerotic homosexual tendencies in Oregon. Um, he's practically obsessed with Tartuffe. <clears throat> And, um, we see a lot of, so far I've seen a lot of homosexual, homoerotic relationships, um, in plays that I've read so far, and, um, this is basically probably the most hilarious take on homosexual, homoerotic, um, tendencies. Um, but, um, what I love about this play is its rhyme scheme, um, great plot structure, and it's hilarious. Certain characters of Sea Lake besides Tartuffe and Orhan, um, and Madame Purnell, who, by the way, I would love to be, I think that makes a great drag role, just saying. <laughs> um, so... Certain certain characters aren't as developed as they should be, and considering they are 
this is the argument of the play. I think it should have been more developed. Anyway, I mean, they, they're too stocky, I guess. Um, and we don't see much of Tartu's religious side. We don't, you know, other than being told he's man found, we don't see enough of Tartu and his trickery. Like, we don't see the hypocrisy as much, so. Um, that's another critique that I saw in this play. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for Tartuffe. And I am, I will be making three more videos today. Plus, I think, makeup videos, well, not makeup, redo videos, so. Um, alright, so, I will... Use this day productively to the best of my ability. Alright, bye.